Hey guys, Crystal here at Crystal's Crafties. Um, today's video is going to be quite a bit different than what you might be used to. If you are used to seeing my videos on crafts or graphic design or Cricut, uh, this is not that. This video is about um, God. It's about the Bible. It's about creation. So if that's not your cup of tea, you might want to go ahead and switch off now. Okay, so why am I doing this, right? Um, that's a really good question. I've never done anything like this. This is not my wheelhouse. This is not something I've ever felt like I wanted to do, but this is something that I have been uh, told to do. And when God tells you to do something, you just, you just do it. Um, I've learned that you just do it. So... A little while back, God told me that I needed to read uh, the book of Enoch, and it's just something that he was impressing on me, and I'm like, mm, I, don't, I don't know about that. Like, you know, I've been taught in all of my theology and, you know, just everything that I know as a Christian says, if it's not in the Bible, it's not for you. You don't need to know it if it's not in the Bible. God has provided everything you need in the Bible. And that's what I had based everything off of. That's what I was holding to. Um, but he just kept impressing on me, read the book of Enoch, read the book of Enoch, read the book of Enoch. And so I did. I mean, you, you don't argue with God. I'm not sure if you've ever tried to, but it doesn't go well. You, you don't tell him no. So I, I did. And um, I found out there's not just one book of Enoch. There's, there's three books of Enoch. Um, I got this specific one off of Amazon. I'll link to it in case you want to check it out. But as I was reading every day, when I would open it up to read, I would pray and I'd be like, you know, if there's anything in here that is not of you, Lord, if there's anything that was added, that wasn't your word, um, you know, let, let me know, impress upon me that that's not something for me because I don't want to believe untruth. I don't want to mix my mind up and start believing things that are not of God. Um, and I'm just reading along, reading along. I still haven't finished all three of them. I finished the first two. And something really, really hit me. And it was about creation. It was, you know, the creation story that we all know, the story in the Bible. God created the earth in six days and on the seventh day he rested. That's something very fundamental for a Christian to know. Um, and I'm like, okay, here's something that I can trace back. I can take what's in Enoch and I can trace it back to the Bible. And I can just see how do these things mesh up? Like how much overlap is there between the Genesis creation story and what I'm hearing or what I'm reading here in Enoch? Um, but it's something that never mattered to me. I never, I knew the story. But it, it never weighed heavily on me. I never really, really just dove into on day one, this was created on day two. Like I couldn't even tell you what happened on what day before this study. It's nothing I had ever really, really cared about. Um, and God was laying it on me as I was reading this. It's just like explosions going off that this is something I needed to know um, because it's going to be important. and. During this time of me reading this and researching it with the Bible and going back and forth between Enoch and the Bible in this creation story, I had a dream and it was a waking dream. Um, it's a dream that I know was from God. And in that dream, he said, teach them to tell the time. And he's not talking about a clock. He doesn't want me to teach people how to tell time. He's talking about the times, the seasons the times of this world and what we're all leading up to. And I'm like, oh, okay. I don't know how to tell the times. How am I supposed to teach people how to tell the times, right? But what I do know is that God created this universe and he created signs in the heavens so that we would know the appointed times and seasons. And it's important. And it's not all laid out for me yet. This is just piece one. And I don't, I don't have to know God's end for me to know that he wants me to start. I don't have to know what all I'm supposed to do along the way. I just have to know step one. This is step one. So 
um, the Bible. Let's just kind of go through the creation story in the Bible. Okay, so day one. This is Genesis 1, 1 through 5. Uh, there was darkness. Oh, I've created this in um, Canva, and I could put it in, I could come up here and put it in presenter mode, and it would like take up the whole screen, but I like being able to like scroll through it, so you're just going to see my Canva backgrounds, and sorry about that. Okay, so day one, there's darkness. The world is formless and empty. The Spirit of God is hovering over the water. If you want to read through this, I'm summarizing um, Genesis 1, uh, verses 1 through 5. Um, okay, so God, the Spirit of God is hovering over the water. He says, let there be light. He saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness, and there was day, and there was night on the first day. And that is what the Bible says about the first day. I had planned on going in order of the Bible, but I think I'm going to skip down to Enoch now. Okay, this is in two Enoch. You know how I said there was three books of Enoch? This is in Enoch 2, which is called um, the book of the secrets of Enoch. Okay, so this is Enoch 2, chapters 25 through 28. So up here, we have day one in the Bible, chapter one, verses one through five. Now, day one in the second book of Enoch gets chapters 25 through 28. That's a lot. So there's a lot of um, summarizing that I had to do, and I could not fit it all onto one screen. It's on two. Okay. So God created the visible from the invisible. He created our physical world from his spiritual world. Okay. So he called forth the light. He actually calls the light by name and he sends it up and he calls forth dark calls forth darkness and he sends it down. And he, God took from the light and he made water and he spread out the water over the darkness. Okay, so we're seeing a little bit now of how earth is getting formed. He pulls from the light water. He pulls water from the light and he spreads the water, the light over the darkness. And he made a foundation of light around the water and he created seven circles from inside the light. These circles are stars. So already day one, he's creating the way that he is going to speak to his people. And then he separated the water, the wet from the dry, the sea from the sky. There's two forms of water here right now. Sea is one form and sky is another form of water. And they're both light. Um, and he placed the circles around the waters and he showed each one its path in the way that it may go the correct way. So he is already creating the seasons. He's creating the rotation, he's creating his gateway for how he's going to communicate with us. Okay, and then he made a separation between light and dark in the midst of the water, and he said to the light that it should be day, and to the dark that it should be night, and there was day and there was night on the first day. So he's creating this higher, lower, light, dark separation with water spread out over the darkness. And then God collected the water together and out of the waves, he created hard, large rock. And from the rock, he piled up dry land and then dry land he called earth. Okay, now in second Enoch, all of this is still day one. If we're up here in the Bible, he separated the light from the darkness and there was day and there was night on the first day. And that's that. Let me scroll down here to day two in the Bible. God, call, God called for a vault to separate water from water. He separated the water under the vault from the water over the vault, and he called the vault sky. Okay, now in Enoch, this is still day one. In the Bible, this is day two. There are some discrepancies there, but they're saying the same thing. Even this says he put water above water. So the sky was like water in, in creation. Um. He separated the water under the vault from the water over the vault, and he called the vault sky. Okay. Let's come back to Enoch. We're still in day one here in Enoch. Okay. So he's pulled forth rock and made it dry, hard land, and he's called it earth. He collected the sea into one place, and he bound it with a yoke. This is the shoreline. This is keeping the sea at bay, separating the sea from the earth. 
God gave the sea eternal limits and commanded that it should not break loose from its integral parts. This day he called the first created Sunday. Okay, so in Enoch, all of that happens on day one. And we just talked about day two in the Bible, um, that God called for a vault to separate the water, and he separated the water from the sky. So all of this in the Bible, day two of creation, we find in Genesis 1, verses 6 through 8. Okay, so there is a little discrepancy there. What happens on day two in Enoch? If all this happens on day two in the Bible, but it happens on day one in Enoch, let's go see what happens on day two in Enoch. So day two, this is chapter 29 of Enoch 2. God created heavenly soldiers and he made the image of essence and he made them the image of essence of fire, which is lightning. From the fire, God created the order of the heavens. God created 10 troops of angels and their weapons, and he commanded that they should stand in their, or in his, each should stand in his own order. Okay, so there's a lot of things we need to understand when we're reading this. Um, first of all, we need to understand that one day to God is not 24 hours. One day is a thousand years. You've heard that saying, a day is as a thousand years. So day one was not a 24-hour time period. That was a thousand years to create the sky and the sea and the land and these seven circles or stars. Like there's a lot that went on right there. <clears throat> and just that epiphany was mind-blowing to me because, you know, if you try to compare science and the Bible, it doesn't add up. Like, Science says that there's things that are, you know, 10 billion years old, but the Bible says that the earth is nowhere near that old. Yes, it is, because God didn't create earth in six actual days, and on the seventh, he rested. That was 6,000 years, and then a 1,000 years of rest. So things really started to come to light when I was reading this and realizing it, and God was putting these revelations on me. Okay. So, um, and you know, the Bible never talks about the order of heaven. You have angels referenced in the Bible. Sometimes you have angels called by name in the Bible. But we've all heard uh, the TV show Seventh Heaven, right? Why is there a seventh heaven? And we've heard of the third heaven and we've heard of the tenth heaven. And these are things that we've heard as Christians but where do they come back to? Where does that reference, like, where did that come from? It comes from Enoch. And God, right here, is telling us how he's created on day two, the heavens. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning. God created heavenly soldiers and made them in the image and essence of fire. So these soldiers are bright and powerful like lightning. And from the fire, God created the order of the heavens. God created ten troops because we're going to have 10 heavens and there's one troop in each heaven and their weapons. And he commanded that each should stand in his order. One angel came out of his order, violating the command that God had given. Um, he conceived an impossible thought and placed his throne or he conceived an impossible thought, which was to place his throne higher than the clouds so that he might become equal in rank to God. Was I talking about? It's talking about Satan. And again, we all know the story, right? As a Christian, you know that Satan or Lucifer was an angel and he was cast out of heaven and thrown down into the pits of hell. We know this, right? This is a story we know. This is a story we were taught. This is a story we believe. Is this story in the Bible? There are two tiny references to this in the Bible, and they are not direct references. They are because you know this information, this is what I'm talking about kind of references. The story is in Enoch. Okay, just going to leave that there with you. This is in 2 Enoch chapter 29. Okay, so God threw him out from the heights with all of his angels, and he was flying in the air continuously above the bottomless. So God cast Lucifer out of heaven along with all the angels that followed him, and they're just kind of floating around above what's going to be the earth, but it's not the earth yet. God has created the light and the darkness, and he has created the water. Okay. 
So that's on the second day in Enoch. Let's come up to day three in the Bible. Okay, so day three in the Bible is Genesis 1, verses 9 through 13. God gathered the water together so dry ground could appear, and he called the dry ground land, and he gathered the waters into sea. And God said, let the land provide vegetation and seed and trees and bear fruit. Okay, so in Enoch, day two, we had the waters gathered together and the land separated. Um, the Bible has that on day three. Because we know in Enoch day two, God created the heavens, which the Bible doesn't tell us. Okay, so, uh, and then it says, you know, he, he laid, um, God said, let the land provide vegetation and seed and trees to bear fruit. Okay, well, let's come down to Enoch day three. Okay, so this is Enoch um, chapter 30. I don't know why I put a one after that. Okay, it's going to be one through three. Sorry. Okay, so on the third day, God created on the third day, God commanded the earth to make and grow great and fruitful trees and hills and seeds to sow. And God planted paradise and enclosed it and placed armed guards um, in the form of flaming angels. Here we are, his lightning angels again. And in this way, God created renewal, plant growth. Re you know, something dies and then grows back. So on day three, we also have vegetation and plants and seeds, and those two things are lining up. Okay. So let's go to day four in the Bible. So here we are, day four, Genesis 1. We're still in chapter one of Genesis, verses 14 through 19. God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate day from night. Let them serve as signs. Now we just talked about God has created signs for us. You know, I said in the very beginning, he said, teach them to tell the time. And we're doing this through signs. I want to pause and tell you what time I'm in right now. Today is March 30th of 2024. Yesterday was Good Friday. Yesterday was the day that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. And tomorrow's Easter, the day he will arise again. Um, that three-day time period there. In just a little over a week, we are about to have a solar eclipse. Um, I live in Texas. I live in a part of Texas where I will be in the path of totality, and I will be able to view that totality for over three minutes. So for God to tell me, you need to teach them to tell the time, and then for God to sit here and show me literally where I live in, in my physical location, I'm going to see this. And there's not many people that are going to get to witness this. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people are coming to Texas to view this. And I just happen to live here in this time, in this day, in this age. Okay. Um, did you know that when Jesus was crucified, there was a solar eclipse. It said the earth went dark. That was an eclipse. That was a three-day time period from the day Friday that he was crucified to Sunday when he resurrected. Now, the eclipse obviously didn't last that long. It was just during the uh, crucifixion. But the timing of right now and another eclipse and it being Easter, I mean, that just really resonates with me. Um, God's talking to us through these signs. Let them serve as signs. God created lights in the vaults of the sky to separate the day from night. Um, I'm sorry, is that not a sun? A light in the vault of the sky to separate from day and night? And he wants it to serve as a sign. And he used that sign during his crucifixion to, to speak, during Jesus' crucifixion to speak to the world. You know when else he used it? You know the story of Jonah? Um, Jonah is someone else who tried to not do what God told him to do. It's really funny when you try to fight against God. You can be like, you know, no thanks, not going to do that. And God's like, mm, you are. You may take a little discipline to get you there, but you're going to do it. So uh, Jonah told God no. Jonah wanted God to go to Nineveh. Um, Jonah was a Jew. And the Jews 
hated the Ninevites because the Ninevites had tried to destroy the Jews. They had killed hundreds and thousands of Jews in, in really brutal, horrific ways. Um, read your Bible. It, it wasn't pretty. And so God tells Jonah, a Jew, to go to Nineveh, his enemy, and tell them to repent so they can be saved. He says, repent, so I won't destroy Nineveh. This is what he tells Jonah to tell the Ninevites. And Jonah's like, no, thanks, God. Let them burn, right? That's what Jonah's thinking. He's like, yeah, no, that's not me. I'm not your person. And Jonah flees, and God puts him in the belly of a whale for three days. And uh, when Jonah finally says, all right, all right, all right, all right, I'll go, I'll do it. <clears throat> he goes to Nineveh, and he gets off his boat, and he steps onto the harbor and the earth goes dark solar eclipse because God is speaking and he was telling the Ninevites to repent so that he didn't destroy them and because Jonah came and because Jonah came with an eclipse and because Jonah was a Jew the king of the Ninevites listened and they repented he called for fasting and prayer and repentance of his people and they repented and God did not destroy the Ninevites at that time. Um, but the sun, the signs in the heavens brought that sign and they adhered to it. God's bringing a sign to us right now. God is speaking to us right now. He is sending a sign to his people, his church, and to the United States of America. And if you don't believe that, it's all written in the Bible and it's all there for you. And God is telling the United States to repent. And you need to listen. You need to hear that. You need to see the signs that he is giving you. Um, but that's not really what I'm here to talk about today. So day four, uh, God created these signs to mark the sacred times and days and years. We know we have a numbered amount of time, a numbered amount of years here before God ends this earth and he calls us home. And he is giving us these signs to know, to be ready, to be prepared. No one knows the exact time, but you can be prepared because God is talking to you and he is giving you signs. Okay. Uh, God made two great lights, the sun and the moon the greater to govern the day and the lesser to govern the night and to separate the light from the dark. Okay, so let's go to Enoch day four. Okay, so this is Enoch uh, chapter 30 verses three through, seven, three through seven. On the fourth day, God commanded that there should be great lights and heavenly circles that matches up. On the first uppermost, uppermost circle, he placed the star Kronos. On the second circle, he placed the star Aphrodite. On the third circle, he placed the star Aries. On the fifth circle, he placed the star Zeus. On the sixth circle, he placed the stars Aramis. On the seventh circle, he placed the moon and adorned it with the lesser stars. God set the sun that it should go according to each of the 12 constellations creating months. What does this say? <laughs> okay. There's a lot to unpack here. First of all, there's no fourth circle. I don't know why. I don't know where that went. But look at these. Kronos, Aphrodite, Ares, Zeus, Aramis. What is all of that? Where did Greek mythology come from? Bam. You, I've, I've always wondered about how all these people could have all these different religions and where it all came from and how did they get it? If, if our God is the one true God and he is, where did all this other stuff come from? They've pulled it from our religion. They've pulled it from God and God's creation. And God created these stars and he gave them these names and they created their own mythology out of it. Um, okay, so this is where he's putting the constellations in and he is um, creating the months, our 12 months, which is what we have in a year. Okay, so let's go, that kind of matched up. Let's go to the Bible, day five. This one's pretty short. Um, so on day five of creation in the Bible, Genesis chapter one, verses 20 through 23, God filled the sea with living creatures and he let the birds fly above the earth and God commanded them to be fruitful and multiply. Okay. Let's go to Enoch day five. Okay, here we go. So this is um, Enoch 
Second Enoch chapter 30, verse 8. On the fifth day, God commanded the sea that it should bring forth fish and feathered birds of many varieties and all animals creeping over the earth, going forth over the earth on four legs and soaring in the air of male and female sex and every soul breathing the spirit of life. Um, so it says the same thing. He put, you know, the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky. But he's saying that he's giving these animals souls. That's something us Christians don't believe. We don't believe that animals have souls. But according to Enoch, they do. And this is not the only place in Enoch that it mentions this. Um, it also says that God calls up the souls of all the dead animals and he reserves them for the day of judgment. And if you've harmed animals in, in a malicious way, not just for food, um, those animals are going to be there on that judgment day, and you're going to hear from them. That's just according to the book of Enoch. You can take that or leave it. Okay. So, day six in the Bible. Okay, so Genesis 1, 24 through 31 is day six. God called forth the land, sorry, God called forth the land to produce living creatures, livestock, and wild animals. God said, let us Make mankind in our likeness. Again, I'm pointing this out because the Holy Trinity is referenced from day one. God didn't say, let me make man in my image. He said, let us, the Holy Trinity, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Let us make mankind in our likeness so they may rule over the fish and birds, livestock and wild animals. And he created them male and female and he commanded them to be fruitful and increase in number and to fill the earth and subdue it and rule over every creature. The end. And on seventh day, he rested. We all know that. So I didn't even put the seventh day in here. All right. So let's go to day six in Enoch. On Friday, sixth day, by the way, also, so if Sunday is day one and we create, we have Sunday as day one on our calendar and Friday is day six, that makes the Sabbath day, Sunday, uh, Sabbath day, Saturday. So today, Saturday is actually the Sabbath day. Okay, so on Friday, the sixth day, God commanded his wisdom to create man from seven consistent applications, flesh, blood, eyes, bones, intelligence, veins, and hair. Veins and hair would be one, and his soul. Okay, so we've got the same thing, but you'll notice as we're going through this, a lot of it is the same, but the Bible is very this, 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 and Enoch is very this, and all of that, this and all of that, it expounds and just gives way more depth and insight. Okay, so God gave us our seven um, consistent applications. To each application, he gave a nature. To the flesh, hearing. To the eyes, sight. To the soul, smell. And to the veins, touch. To the blood, taste. And to the bones, endurance. And to intelligence, enjoyment. Okay. God created man from both spiritual and from physical. From both came his death and his life. So again, we've got renewal. We've got God pulling from the spiritual and from the physical, and he's creating man. He's creating Adam. God gave man speech and wisdom and placed him on earth like a second angel to be honorable and great and glorious. God's intention was for man to, to be like angels on earth. He already had his heavens. He created them on the second day. He created all those troops and orders of angels and all those 10 heavens. And he created this amazing, magical, spiritual world. And then he wanted to replicate that on earth. So he created man to be like his angels to rule on earth. Still day six here. Um, this is to Enoch chapter 30 verses 12 through 16 and then chapters 31 and 32 so this is a lot being kind of condensed here so god appointed man to rule over the earth god showed the man two ways the light and the darkness and he told him this is good and that is bad light is good dark is bad god god called the man adam god put the man to sleep and while he was asleep god took a rib from him and created a wife so that death may come to him by his wife and her name was eve i'm a woman i don't really like that but god had to bring death to every life has to have death there has to be an end god had to bring in death he brought it in through sin and sin came in through eve women were created 
to be the downfall of man. Um, sorry. Okay. So God made the heavens open to Adam so that he may see angels singing and see the lights without the shadows. So in the beginning, when Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, they could look up and they could see the heavens and they could see all that magic. And they had a direct face-to-face -face relationship with God. Um, and Adam was five and a half hours in paradise, which was 5,500 years. And then on the seventh, um, he, seventh day, he rested, or that other thousand years. Okay, so why is all of this important? Why do we need to know this? We need to understand the beginnings and we need these expanded views because of everything that's going to come. You need to know that the Bible is talking to you and telling you and pointing you to the future. Even these books of Enoch, which were written well before the Bible, they spoke of the judgment day. They spoke of revelation they spoke of um all all of the things that are to come they spoke of enoch tells of noah um noah is enoch's great grandson like um and he he told him hey dude you're gonna build this boat and you're gonna reproduce and save the earth because god's gonna destroy it or save mankind because god's gonna destroy the earth all of that's in enoch enoch is a really truly amazing um, but you need to know these things and you need to know the expansion because we're going to need this information in the future. We're going to need to know these things. I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know why I was told to do this, um, but it doesn't matter. God knows why and we'll know why eventually it will come to fruition. I don't know when I'll have another video out like this. Um, cause again, I don't, this is not of me. This is, this is something I've been told and led to do. But anyways, I'm going to link to this, um, book. It's the three books of Enoch. Um, and if you have questions, drop them in the comments. We'll see you next time.